Today's adventure brings me to downtown Cleveland as the recording of the Saturday, October 8th, 2022. It's about 8.30 a.m. Starting off the day with a cool, crisp breeze here in downtown. Now, last night, we kind of wandered around here during very, very busy times. Much different on a morning, a wet, overcast, I think it rained last night as well, morn down this road. Kind of like all the old neon and whatnot. House of Blues is here, and then the Cleveland Welcome Center right over there. What's the name of this road? This is East 4th. East 4th Street. We're gonna mission for some coffee first, and then do the intro. And we're just gonna kind of wander around downtown here for a little bit. And right here at the entrance is a rather large hand. I'm not sure the significance of this, but there's a hand here. You can almost put your hand in that one. You were telling me about the arcade last night. You said I need to go check out the arcade. And it's not the typical arcade. No, it, no, not it's, at all. It's more of a, like just the design of the building. You also, oh, hi. welcome everyone out of the you? Woo here. Splore and Ryan, we are going to game two of the wild card series. Cleveland, not the Indians, the Guardians. They've changed their name. And Tampa Bay Rays, I am wearing an appropriate hat. I think I might be the first person going inside Progressive Field ever to wear an Epcot Center 35th anniversary from five years ago shirt. You have your hat, right? I do. It's, it's uh, down here. It from the old you're, getting it, you're, getting it, you're getting it ready. But before we do that, I'm not going to film much at the game. I'll film a little bit whether the Rays win or lose. They lose today. They are completely eliminated from the playoffs and the season is over. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> but I just want to do other stuff around downtown. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so uh, this over here, this arcade. Yes. And I will join you in a second. Yes. This arcade over here. Brace yourself, because after what Adam told you about an arcade, you're going to be thinking one thing. You're going to get something else, and hopefully, you'll join us. Shall you? For just a little sport. All right. Mixing signals here. Join me. Shall you? Nailed it. We threw me off with that. How about that? The door has been opened. Oh wow. Look at this. I'm getting some Blade Runner vibes in here. Oh my, look at this, what in the heck? Yeah, this was not what I was thinking when I thought of an arcade. You've seen Blade Runner. Uh, the original. The original Blade Runner. Doesn't this kind of remind you of the Blade Runner building where Harrison Ford lived? Kind of, sort of? Yes. Well, Blade Runner, the remake was, or the sequel, whatever you want to call it, Ooh, I, yeah. was filmed in Here? Cleveland. Uh, I don't know if it was in this building. It's the guy from La La Land. in Cleveland, yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, La La. La La guy. Yeah. He's in some films. All right. Take a look at this. So here is a kind of a retro throwback type of photo. And you could just see everyone dressed in their dapper best back in the day. You got the flag up top says the arcade, Cleveland, Ohio. Now I'm looking in this glass window. Is this the grocery store you pointed out the other night when we were walking, or last night when we were walking around? It absolutely is. Intersection of Euclid Ave and East 9th Street. So we're gonna go by here. This is now a grocery store mm -hmm. right here. Can I point out uh, real quick, uh, when you go in, uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get a chance to look at it, there's uh, murals at the top that were yeah. painted by a gentleman that actually died on the Titanic. Oh. Okay, you got to show me that when we get in there. And here is a very, very brief information placard on some of the points of interest. Covered passageway lined with shops, that's pretty obvious, but modeled after Galleria Vittori, Vittori Emmanuel II in Milan, Italy. The arcade's international reputation and one of the finest buildings of its type. And the arcade was built for $875,000 back in 1890, known as Cleveland's Crystal Palace. Got the staircase leading down here. And then over here is the post office, and there is the Rising Star down there. It's the Rising Star Coffee. The five-story galleries connect the 10-story towers facing the city's two main thoroughfares. I like to use the word thoroughfares. Unique architecture designs are one of the daring construction exterior. Romanesque revival, popular Victorian style. All right, gonna get some coffee. I'm wearing pants today too, because it's cold. And before I put the lid on it, I want to show off my vanilla bean latte right here. Very decorative, has a little heart on it. Got the lid. And this was from Rising Star Coffee Roasters. Looks good. We're gonna pepper in a, a few movie locations as well. Now I stay at the Christmas Story House. I don't know, a year, two years ago, give or take. I've done the, some of the filming locations, even though some of it was in Canada, some of it was here in Cleveland. But I've never been over here 
to where they stood in front of this building, the May Company, and then over here, so Sporin Ryan was informing me that that is where Santa was, the ho 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 scene, when he like takes his foot, ho, ho, ho. So it was right behind this sculpture right here. And there's also a very beautiful cathedral church over here we're gonna walk over to. When you think of, when you think of Cleveland, you definitely think of the Christmas story. Oh, easily, easily. And you also said Avengers took place right down through here. So right over here, they filmed a lot of the Marvel movies to begin with over here. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. If you watch the scene with Nick Fury being chased down by the Winter Soldier in his right car. Right through here. That, the car came right up here. That's awesome. Yeah, and right about here is where his car would have exploded and turned upside down. Now I am more of, a, I think I'm more of a DC superhero guy. I've started to get into the Marvel stuff. Yesterday you were wearing a mashup Simpsons WandaVision shirt, which is pretty awesome. I like WandaVision. And I'm doing that tie-in because also Superman was created here in Cleveland. Speaking of DC, you know, Superman, Batman DC. Are you more of a Marvel or a DC guy? Uh, Batman is my number one character. Oh, you're wearing the Batman Period. shirt. You're wearing the Batman shirt. Um, I'm wearing the, the old school Batman shirt. Look at that, right uh, there. But, Tim Burton. Uh, for movies, I would say I am more of, if I'm going new school movies, it's Marvel. But Batman 89 is my favorite movie ever. You heard it right from Splore and Ryan. YouTube Zone. Splore and Ryan. And because Ryan is local to this area before he moved to Orlando, he knows quite a bit. He was also saying that this was the precursor to the original Macy's. That you see from the you know, Macy's Day Parade and whatnot. So real quick, I should mention that uh, Macy's is a separate company, but when Macy's started getting bigger, the May Company, uh, which turned into a few other things, has been swallowed up by uh, Macy's. And with the leave cha leaves changing through here, very beautiful. I'm kind of slightly zoomed in because I want to show this ghost signage up here. That's what it's referred to when you see an advertisement painted on the side of brick. This says, visit our luncheonette section. Must have been a furniture store. I just love this kind of stuff. Little relics of the past. Now, fun fact, they did not film much of Major League, the film, the baseball movie, inside Cleveland, or in, in the city limits of Cleveland, except for the beginning scenes. It was all filmed in a different state. However, some of the intro scenes took place right here, including this sculpture. Let me step down. I stepped up here just to kind of get the angle. But right here, this was shown at the beginning of Major League. You know, I'm just going to pepper in some filming locations. But this is where the namesake of the town got its name from Moses Cleveland. Okay, I was listening in as you were talking to your camera. You're telling me where Loki stood in the Avengers is right next to the Christmas story window it over is, here? It is all the same, it is all the same uh, complex. Yeah. Tower city complex. Yeah. So Avengers Loki, I do like the Loki show because yeah. it has the one guy from Cars, the wow guy, what's his name? Wow. wow. Oh, Owen. Royal Tenenbaums. Owen Wilson. No, was, he Royal, was Owen Wilson in Royal Tenenbaums? I don't know. He was in Bottle Rocket, nonetheless. Over here, Jack's Casino, Christmas Story window. Is this his cabbage? Uh, it looks like cabbage. I don't know if I'd eat that. Looks like someone, someone has those. Someone's not on the side there. Whew, it's kind of brisk and chilly outside. Kind of nice to be going in somewhere. It's kind of warm. Wow. I just, not an Owen Wilson nod, but doing that on my own accord. Look at this roof. Now over there, that mural says, welcome to Tower City. Take a look at this US mail letterbox right here. And there's a little placard here that says, the very first railroad was on April 14th of 1872 at this spot. All right, as I walk in here, this kind of reminds me, I know I was filming, speaking of filming locations, this kind of reminds, reminds me of the escalators from Legend of Billy Jean right here with Helen Slater and Christian Slater. This kind of reminds me of that, even though that was filmed in. That is a filming location. This is? This is also Captain America and the Winter Soldier. This was uh, Chris Evans and uh, no Scarlett way. Johansson coming down here wearing their, uh, I, I don't remember if it was this escalator right here or the one that you see over there, but they were coming down here 
uh, trying to look inconspicuous. Okay. It also reminds me of the Legend of Billie Jean escalators, kind of, sort of, in the stairs. It's not. It was, that was filmed in Texas. Spoiler reminder: just tell me that they used to have War a Warner Brothers store, an mm -hmm. old school Warner Brothers store back in the day, with some sculptures of like who was over there. Uh, we had uh, that I remember. They at least had Bugs Bunny, and they at least had Daffy. Daffy Dog. Bugs. They were giant gold, uh, and they were wearing uh, uh, tuxedos, and kind of looked like giant Oscars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. When you went inside, there were Superman and Batman statues bursting out of the walls. Nice. And it certainly was a fountain. No water effects at the moment. But the water would kind of go down the side of this, like that. Into this little retention area here. And here's a photo before they got rid of Bugs and Daffy, which both of them stood right over there in that area. As the bus pulls in, I just noticed over here, this window to this, now it's an open convenience store, has been shattered out. Look at this, the windows here is completely, completely busted out. Now as I approach this cathedral here, this church building, you see the very impressive steeple, I was seeing online that this is one of the very first street lamps ever created. Now I cannot confirm if it's the first one in the US or if it's the first one just in Cleveland, but it's next here next to the Society National Bank. And look at this depository box here, this after hour thing. That has seen some years as well. All right, after looking up a couple quick things online, you never know, you can't completely trust the internet, but the web says that this was put here in 1890 which would have been about 50 years after the bank itself. And it stated that this was Cleveland's first street lamp. And Ryan, explain to me what these little bugs right oh, here are. No, it's midges, it's Canadian soldiers. Can okay, so these basically, these are like the love bugs. Florida, we have love bugs. Here in Cleveland, you have these little insects, which are kind of every everywhere. Yeah, this is awesome. Established 1820. The spire which rises above the tower stands as a tribute to the pioneers and early settlers of Cleveland, and I thought someone was sitting over here, but this is not a real person. This is a sculpture right here as well. It says, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of your brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Okay, we were kind of cut off back there. I'm talking about the bugs. Yes. So they do not have eyes. No, they don't have mouths. They don't have mouths. So how do they eat exactly? They don't. They, they last about two days. They just come into town. They breed. They lay their eggs, and then they're they're gone. And there's piles of them usually afterwards. Interesting. So this is the Cleveland love bugs. Yep. Midges or Canadian soldiers. Do they ever connect with each other? Not that I've seen. And make sweet sweet love. Uh, I'm sure they do. I just don't watch. In two it. days, they only survive two, two days, days though. Yeah. Get your. Get they got to get it in while they can. Get your kicks. Now this is a very impressive sculpture right here. Pointing towards the heavens, this fountain right here in this little courtyard, now standing in front of this Drury Plaza Hotel. Honest Abe. Actually, there's quite a few Abe Lincolns here around town. I think most cities have old Honest Abe, who is overlooking quite the majestic courtyard. Look at this. These little figurines are kind of in this little courtyard as well. And there's some pieces of artwork. Down here we got different words and letters going through here. A little fountain. Oh, look at this little pyramid. So look down into the library? Yeah, it looks like- I uh, think it does. What was the Tom Hanks movie? Uh, Big. Splashed. No, the the, the one burbs. Where he's investigating the Vatican. Uh, oh, uh, I don't remember. And just like Superman, Clark Kent would have done, kind of go through this little. I always think of Superman when I walk through here. And I believe it's on the second floor. So we're gonna go up this granite staircase. Awesome! Look at this. Okay, confirmed. It is in here. Homecoming, a heritage of Ohio's own Superman. What the heck, yes. Here's Jerry Siegel's writing desk. Look at this. Jerry Siegel purchased this writing desk at his home 
University Heights in 1940, almost always writing at home on his typewriter, wrote hundreds of scripts at his desk for Superman comics. This is the freaking desk. What? That's awesome. His daughter donated the desk to the Cleveland Public Library back in 2017. And over here, not only Jerry Siegel, but also Joe Schuster. Siegel passed away in 96, Schuster in 92. And here's a little in, in carving of them here. Some of the plaques and medallions. And of course, one of the first Superman films that was actual on film, non-comic ver versions, film-wise, was the TV Superman, George Reeves, not to be confused with Christopher Reeve, Reeves and Reeve, Chris Reeve, from the Richard Donner Superman's, the set early, you know, the late 70s version, which is my favorite. I prefer the Donner cut of Superman 2, but this is a George Reeves life mask right here. And here's a Superman in the Moleman script from 1951. Now my dad and I kind of bonded over Superman, the original Donner Superman, but he always told me that this was his Superman. I'm a Chris Reeve Superman, my dad loves Chris Reeve too, but my dad always said that this was who he, you know, was a fan of growing up. Yeah, definitely Superman is probably my favorite superhero. This is so freaking cool. Adam Man versus Superman. A job for Superman. Kirk Allen. You know what, I'm not really familiar with, he was the first actor to portray the Man of Steel on film back in 1948. How did I not know that? And the fact that they have the desk right here, that's pretty freaking cool. And truthfully, I had read that they had some stuff in here, but there's a lot more than I expected. You know, they have some of the souvenirs and collectibles over the years. Some of the newer stuff, older stuff, Supergirl. Got Wonder Woman up top, kind of keeping with the DC vibe. Oh, Superman 2, look at this right there, there's Zod. I need this board game. Kneel before Zod. Chris is gone. Margot's gone. But it still lives on. In pop culture, in the hearts of a lot of people who love the franchise. Look at this. It's also amazing that by just putting on glasses, you would never know that it's not the Man of Steel. You would just simply think <laughs> that it was Clark, Clark Kent. <laughs> hey, here's a deep cut. Check this out, a canon film. You know, I love canon films. Superman 3 was a canon film. I think, you know what? Maybe, no, Superman 4 was the canon film. Quest for Peace was canon. That was Warner. <laughs> Superman 3 was Richard Pryor. I always heard stories that Pryor kind of regretted doing Superman 3. I don't know if that's true or not, but. Yeah, Superman 4 was the canon film. This was a good stop off. Also getting out of the cold for a little bit. It's a little brisk out there. Right here in Cleveland creating one of the most recognizable pop culture icons of all time to find an entire generation of comic book heroes. Siegel and Schuster go through several different incarnations of the Superman character, including the villainous version, before finally settling in 1933, Superman as we know today, the last son of Krypton, and the creative team of Siegel and Schuster would appear for the first time in print, 38, Action Comics number one. The rest, as they say, is history. Check out the Man of Steel with a, quite of a, a little smirk on his face, promoting the pasteurized process of imitation cheese spread. It's 
funny, right? <laughs> I'm kind of a sucker for these like retro 70s, early 80s vintage glasses. That's Reeves. Yeah. Reeve. Chris Reeve. Christopher Reeve. Those are his glasses. Is that Reeves glasses? No, it's Chris. It's Christopher Reeve. Yeah, but they belong to him. So oh, please pluralize. Christopher Reeves. You got me on that one. I almost missed this. So obviously, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's the 75th anniversary of Superman, which was quite a while ago already. But this shows the timeline here of Kalel is sent to Earth. Rocket lands in Smallville. Becomes Superboy. Now there's the gets a job at the Daily Planet. Oh, meets up with Batman and Robin. Oh, that's the Batman and Robin years, teams up years. Superboy meets Crypto. Oh, Beepo the Super Monkey. Uh huh. That's a deep cut. There's, is that Lex Luthor right there? I think it might be. Good Lex Luthor. Yeah. And then, of course, going towards the crescendo of the. I used to have the very last episode. Remember, like in the 90s, they put the one out where he. The polybagged black. Yeah, thing. I had that one thinking it was gonna like seal my retirement, be mm -hmm. worth a lot of money later. Spoiler alert. It's worth 25 bucks, man. Now back outside. See through these tree branches, there's a dog being walked. There's a couple dogs over there. They're barking at each other. Two dogs cro crossing the road. Here's another look at all these bugs here along the side. Side of the wall here. They're everywhere. They have no mouths. Ooh, I even have one on me. Is it like a mosquito? Is it like, oh, it doesn't have mouths. There's no way it can like, it's not like doing the vampire thing or anything, right? So I just kind of, get off, get off him, bug. Finding a place to die, really. Get off of me, bug. It, actually, I think it just did fall. And there it is. A rather large, oversized, gargantuan stamp. Look at the comparison with that car driving by and people walking by in front of the stamp. It has f the words F-R-E-E, -E, free, written on the side of it. Big old stamp over there. Rather large stamp set. Take a look at this beauty. The Galleria. You know what? I don't even know if it's even open. They got some cones out front, but the Galleria looks very retro looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. The Galleria and Tower at Erie View. Oh, my God. Just like an empty mall. Oh, Lord. Empty mall alert. And this is just basically right downtown walking over to the stadium. Got to get over there for first pitch. Game two, the wild card series. There's no one in here. Just some mall walkers. This is the kind of stuff I just love so much. I don't know why I'm whispering. Look at the old elevator there, not working. Kind of stanchioned off section over here. The old food court. This is gold. Retro gold. Wow. Restroom closed. Oh, man. You do not see empty food courts like this too often. Now, you see a lot of malls that have do have things open and the music's still blaring and stuff. This place is a relic of the past. It's like something out of Stranger Things. The window washing mechanism up top there. Now this leads up and down to something. This must be restrooms or something down there. But most of the escalators are not operational.
I feel like my friend Dan Bell or Ace's Adventure would love this place. Either one of them. This is right up their alley. It's my, up my alley too, but that's... If they were here, they would definitely love this. Okay, the entire level two is closed. Oh, look at these retro chandeliers over here. Completely empty mall alert. Hello. 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 Just love this elevator. Cannot go up to the second floor for obvious reasons. There would be no reason to go up there. I don't even know there was any reason to go down here on the first floor. That was well worth stopping in to check out. And look at this, speaking of checking out, some, some speakers here. 2011, 2000. Just random speakers. Very unique mural here on the side. And it says, inscripted on the bottom of it says, life is sharing the same park bench. So this is an interpretation of a park bench. It says it right over there behind those speakers. That's what the terminology says. Now, a little earlier, I was talking about the, the old bank that is now a grocery store. This is that old building, the trust company, the Cleveland Trust Company that now has a grocery store inside of it. And Ryan just filled me in on something also. Spider-Man 3 utilized this grocery store slash trust company building in Spider-Man 3. I didn't realize that until now. Now I should also point out this AT&T building right here was the inspiration for the Daily Planet, speaking of Superman. inning. 13 innings. So we're all heading into the 13th. Oh wait, no, maybe not. What the heck? Okay, that was very peculiar. Evidently there were two strikes, that ended up being the third strike, but the scoreboard only said one strike, so the Rays went off the field. The Guardians thought there was only one strike into two strikes, but ended up where there was two. Yeah, that was very good. Now in the bottom of the 13th, veteran starter Corey Kluber for the Rays. Bottom of the 14th, scoreless innings, complete shutouts on either side. Two strikes, Kluber on the mound. Two outs. Could go to the 15th. Taking it to the 15th. Two close teams. And that's gonna do it for today. From downtown Cleveland, Ohio. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.